Good afternoon, everybody. It's Sunday. I'm not even sure what the date is. Uh, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Um, anyway, I am uh, I am smoothing. Uh, I'm actually uh, raking right now to make the shape of the head uh, just right. And the way I have to do this is I have to stand up over top of the head to... And you'll see these rakes of fine lines here. Um, these little rake uh, marks on here. Believe it or not, when you go to smooth this out, it's easier. Um, because then all you're doing is taking down the rake marks and you're not really d digging into the clay as much. Right now I'm digging into the clay to shape the head. I had to... Uh, Sculpt this. I shouldn't be pulling over from that side. What I want to be doing is this way. Now I'm standing directly behind the sculpture to make sure that the, the shape stays like a head. Like a human head. And uh, preferably Shatner's human head. <laughs> um, that is a task in itself. Believe me, I'm getting all... See now, you see a little bellows here? I don't know if... Uh, is it coming in on the... All right, you'll, you'll see these little low spots. And what I'm doing is getting rid of those low spots by bringing down the high spots. And uh, keeping to the shape as I do it. Yes, sir. We are coming along pretty good now. And you always want to clean your rake because... What happens is it ends up piling up onto the rake and then goes right back onto the mass like this. See these little pieces? You don't want that. You want to, you want to rake that off because you don't want to put stuff back into the... So, I wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I think I said that already, but I'll say it again. Can't hurt. Let's see, what else can we do? Yeah, we're, we're, we're a couple weeks from Christmas. So what's everybody doing for Christmas? I guess, hope you're not going out there and spending tons and tons of money. I just think it's more, it should be more about family. I don't know. I don't know, though. I, when, it came, when it comes to the kids, I like to, uh, I like to go overboard. I always did. I was like a big kid at heart and still am. Obviously, <laughs> uh, doing this is, uh, I guess, can be considered childish by some. Um, but you know what? I don't care. I love it. And uh, I uh, really, really, really enjoy sculpting. I think it's the, the art of, you know, see, I don't know if I can give you a great shot. Because you're not high enough. The camera doesn't go up high enough. It's not give, getting the same point of view that I am getting. I have you on a stand right now until I bring this shape into. What I'll do is I'll go over top of, once I'm done shaping this, I'll go over top of the whole thing and I'll give you a general idea of why and point out what I was doing why I was doing. All right, so we still got some high spots back here. See all those little dark dark spots or low spots. All the, the lighter spots are the high spots. And we want to make it all come together. And once you have those low spots disappear, you're pretty smooth. You know, you're not trying to take too much clay off now. That's that's not the objective. You cut, you cut too much clay off, you end up destroying the shape of the head. So you just got to keep raking. Oh, see that? It disappeared. And you just keep raking away, and, just, and you got to constantly move from spot to spot to keep that shape coming together. Get rid of all those low spots. 
and the rake makes it nice and easy I guess to see that progress I haven't figured out I, like you know when you use the other side of this one side's smooth and one side's got little dig uh, little rakes in it little rake marks in there right now I'm using the rake side and then I smooth it out with this side here see and you got to do that like really fast and you're taking out all the rake spots and you're you know and you're keeping keeping it true to the shape you don't you're not really putting too much pressure on this blade as you can see how the little fibers are coming you can see how it's real small those little pieces i went over there probably like 20 times and and uh uh, to smooth that out, but you can see 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 how that's getting smooth right in here right where I was working at I gotta get back to raking to finish this back to finish the shape up. See I see a low spot right in here Make sure I'm on the rake side. Yes, and I want to kind of make that disappear And you got to watch if you're if you're Everybody's got to have it and so do I of making the mistake of coming up and starting at the exact same point and then all of a sudden you got a divot a divot right here where you where you went back so you got to change your your distances on how far back you're you're uh, you're raking from you you don't want to re reach to one spot consistently all over and, over and over and over again because then you end up digging out uh and you're going whoa wait a minute how'd that happen you know <laughs> that's how so, you know, you just really, really work this material. But uh, you'll see the face in a minute. I'm working on the head to get the shape of the head perfect. I piled on more clay up top here because the crown was a little too low. And if the eye holes don't line up with your eyes, um, you know, you'll be looking into the cheeks if I, if I have that head uh, the top of the head too shallow. In other words, if the head was shorter down here, um, yeah, I, I don't know. You'd be looking up into the eye. No, yeah, you'd be looking into the cheeks. I stop and think about that. I got backwards. Red room, red room, red room. <laughs> some will get that, some won't. Um, but uh, anyway, I'm just cleaning up a little bit of clay. Easiest method to clean up all these little fibers of clay. I'm just pressing this down on top of the table and picking up all the little balls of clay. And I just put them back into my clay bucket. And, uh, I try not to lift this guy. Now you see? See how he's coming along? And you see the shape is now really starting to really come, come to life here. I got to take a little more up here. This is almost where the hairline's going to be. And I see I'm forgetting to take this off the rake. And all the little fibers stay right up on top. And I don't want that to happen. And I don't want to cut into the face. That's not where I want to go. I'm going to stay right on top of the head here, just bringing this down a little more and rounding it. Get all those low spots. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. We are getting there. As you can see, this is not a, this is really me doing this. This is, ooh, see, and I, I started digging in in one spot, and that's, um, Got to bring it down just a little bit. Okay. Caught that in time. I shouldn't be doing it from this angle. I have to be looking at this dead on. Because. I'm looking. I'm looking right straight down. Right from the top of the forehead. You know down. That's where the scowl is. On the face. And uh, his scowl was very prominent. Uh, William Shatner's scowl, or at least the mask was, anyway. Um, it was supposedly from a life cast, but I think, uh, you know, 
there were so many even even the one that uh they used for the movie i'll bet that was like a, a thousand like number one thousand as far as the copy of the mask itself um so my thought is yeah man yeah, that's starting to really look good starting to really look good just trying to get these now some of these low spots are long and they're supposed to be they're supposed to be there because there's the high brow here and i want that little debit in here that's in the forehead um, I already did that in the shaping of the mask. So, yeah, this is, uh, it's tedious. You know, I'm not going to say everybody, you know, you go out there and you think you're going to pull this off. This is a very difficult mask to do. I, even for myself, it's, it's, it's not easy you know, you really have to study, because most of it's all done with pictures. Uh, you have to study those pictures really well. If I, if I had a 3D, if I literally had the original mask uh, right here in front of me, like this here, in 3D, I would nail this mask to almost perfection. Because uh, I'm just pretty good with that. Let me readjust that. I'm pretty good with the uh, uh, copying uh, pictures. You just don't see the actual shape. You you you're guessing. You're guessing. You're guessing. You're guessing. So now, do I see anything that indicates there's a little bit of a dip right here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit from this side. A little bit more from the top. Yeah, baby. See that, man? Mm hmm. And now it's more egg shaped, the, uh, the head. Just by adding a little bit on the top of the crown is all I needed to do to really pull that the shape back to where it should be. And uh, let me get away from that rake on the face. Oh yeah, I don't want to have to do that again. I did a lot of smoothing out on the face already. All right, so now I'm using the, and then what, what you're doing now is you're just taking the rake marks out because you already pretty much shaped it. So now it's just take the rake marks out and you've got your shape. And then once I get all that done, then I rub this thing down with naphtha. Uh, this is a plastine uh, clay and naphtha really cleans it. Um, or, you know, smooths it out really nice. I guess it's got a plastic in the clay. It's weird when you see the, when you see the clay in the pot, when you're melting it, uh, all the plastine kind of, kind of bubbles up to the surface and it ends up being, let me see, it ends up being real yellow. You'll see yellow all over the place on the surface of the clay before you stir it up. And you have to stir it to blend that clay. You know, to uh, re reestablish that plastine back into the clay. You don't. You definitely don't want to. Yeah, this is looking good, baby. Yeah, I can do this now. I can actually just stick to. Mm -hmm. Stick to the non-rake side and start getting all the rake marks off. See, that's, that's the only thing about the flat side is, is it really piles up the clay on the edge of the blade and you have to get that off of there or else it end up re 
reapplying those bits of clay right on top of the surface again and that's a nightmare because then it you end up little bubble marks all over the place little clay uh boogers that's what i call them boogers clay boogers all over the all over the uh mask all over the clay sculpture we don't want boogers we don't like boogers i know one thing i gotta clean my tools really bad i did clean them right prior to starting this thing and then uh, they're buggered they're boogered up that's for sure they're all boogered up yeah gotta get them boogers off and keep smoothing yeah baby we are we are really getting close now and uh you know i'm probably going to look this thing over a million times before i finally pull the trigger and make the mold uh it's a uh it's one of those things you, you see something like i'll look at a picture and i'll go wait a minute that doesn't look right why does this look wrong you know and all of a sudden you'll go okay i have to cut back on the cheek i had to do that here let me see are you in frame down here by the cheek yes this cheek was was literally bulged out too far so i had to shave this back some i had to, I had to I had, a, I had a nut shaved. Well, you know, just sculpt, sculpt it back and uh, take some of the cheek off here into the into the undercut. You know, it was just sticking out too far. And it, it just, it, it was bugging me. I was like, wow, what, what is wrong? Why is it, why doesn't this look right? What am I, see? and that's the problem. I don't have something in 3D to copy from, you know, in front of me. You know, it's, when you're doing sculptures, man, you're really, you're dependent on a, a 2d uh, image to create a 3d effect and you're also copying somebody else's work which makes it extremely difficult um, because there is no you know there is no um, it's, it's like I can't just let it go it's got to be right you know it's got to be the way it, the way it's supposed to look and uh, I'm doing it the best of my ability and why I know that I'm doing my best abilities because I keep I keep going over and over and over again just to make sure that I that I'm not missing something. And uh, I've been pretty uh, pretty diligent with this. You know I you know the funny thing is I said oh this is going to take a couple months because I'm going to really take my time. But my thing is I get into this thing and all of a sudden seven hours goes by. You know, and, and, you know, these are short videos, you know, even when I do a 45 minute video doing this, they're still short videos considering how long that I really work on this, you know, and, you know, this is why these masks, you know, when you, when you get a really high quality mask, you know, no matter whether it's Michael Myers or something else, and it looks really like the movie version, um, you're spending money for that because it's a lot of work. It's not, it's not something, you know, you're not going to buy a $60 mask that way. You want to buy a $60 mask and, and, uh, um, I advise you not to search out, uh, artists, you know, an artist version of any mask. They're, uh, they're time consuming. Most times the artist is by himself. He doesn't have a whole fleet of people working on something or, you know. And, uh, actually when it comes to sculpting, I can't see how, you know, a lot of people would work on one sculpture. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> artist gets a hold of something and he don't stop until he's finished it. Yeah, most artists, at least I, I would think so. You know, I'm just kind of trying to fix this brow real nice, you know, cause that's basically where the hairline is right here. And then it tucks back down behind the ear when the ears are put on. I still got a ways from that. Um, now what's cool, I have a William Shatner. It's a knife wielder. I have to re-hair because the hair got damaged in something. I got some kind of oil or something in it. I'll turn the mask over here. <clears throat> I have a knife wielder right there. <laughs> And uh, I can actually, you know, visually see the ear 
you know, perfect. You know, I can see exactly what was on that sculpture. I don't know if he actually used the model and then sculpted this himself, but I actually feel like that was actually from the Shatner um, casting, life casting. Um, but the guy's name was Ezra. He was awesome. He sent me that mask way back in 2001, and it was a very thick mask. Let me give you an idea. When I say quality, you know, when you have a, a really good high-quality latex and you uh, you make it nice and thick, it'll last a long time. Now, this thing I've had since 2001, and uh, I have to rehair it. But, man... You see how thick that is? That's like an eighth inch thick there. All right, that's pretty thick. That's a thick casting. And uh, that's why it lasted. So, and that's how I want to sell my mask. I want them to be thick. I don't want them to be thin. And in order for me to do a thick casting, I have to make sure that this mask is very oversized because the shrinkage is crazy. Uh, let me give you an idea. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, man, this is brutal because this thing is massive. All right, we need a side by side. Give me a sec here. I gotta move a few things to make this right. All right. Do you see the size difference? Look at where the chin lines up. Where I got the ears. Look at the two ears. See how much of a shrinkage there is there? This is this this mask right here to my on your right is that mask from that mold. And from shrinkage up from when you make the mask, you know. Yeah. Look at the difference in height. Look at the head, the top of the heads all the way down. It's like literally two inches, two inches smaller. Um, that's why you have to make these masks. Your sculpture has to be like at least two inches bigger than your head. You know, and, and uh, sometimes a little more than that, depending on what you want to do. Like, see me. I want to make two different sizes. So people that with a large head, they'll get one that's casted from that actual mold. All right. And then what I'll do, somebody with a smaller head, I'll cast this twice. And it'll, the shrinkage will be even just like that mask that we just put side by side. That was done twice. So, you know, you get the large mask and then the, you know, small mask. Uh, there is no medium there's no way to do that because the small is as small as you want to go. It's like the, uh, this is a Tots Trick or Treat Studios Michael Myers 2018 mask that I'm actually uh, altering to make look really awesome when I'm done. But that is an incredibly small mask. As a matter of fact, let me see if I'll put that next to my sculpture. To give you an idea, you get the tool out of the way. I put it right next to it. Give me a sec here. I'm going to reach over here. Pardon me. Look how small that mask is compared to that. I'll bring it down to the chin level to make the chins even. <laughs> that's insane man it's so much smaller that's why a lot of people don't like this mask is because most people can't fit into it so that's why I'm making this mask that's why I made the uh, Night Creeper 2020 um, let me see I, now that I've got the shape pretty much down and I'm just roughing it let me give you some good angles I'll drop the camera down now Maybe if I didn't break it. There we go. Sorry for the jumping around. This thing's not exactly turning smoothly. Let me 
Okay, this is this is my 1978. Doesn't have a name yet. I keep telling everybody if you want to give it a name, the winner for the best name will receive one of these masks when it's in production. And you can see it's going to be a very high quality mask. You can do whatever you want. You can sell it. You can do what you want with it when you get it. But whoever comes up with a good name, you know, that's going to be your, uh, that's going to be the prize. A copy of this mask. Yeah, see, I have a, I have a ton of hair. See all those bags up there? That's hair for the mask. All those bags of hair, and that comes from Europe, this stuff. It's actually a wool. And it's uh, good stuff. But, um, yeah, it's a high-quality hair. You know, uh, I got my tools. That's my release spray right in the middle there. I got all kinds of tools there. I got tools sitting all out on the tabletop. See the nice mess that I made? <laughs> That's, that's what happens when you're sculpting, man. You don't have time for cleanup until you're done. Then you clean up. Right now I'm doing my I'm doing my uh, sculpting still, and I, I got a ways to go. I got a ways to go. But uh, this goes on YouTube. Smash the like. Please hit subscribe. And uh, I would really love more people to uh, join the party and if you're really into sculpting and you're and you like you know you like what you're seeing here you know give me a shout out and uh you know if you want a mask or something from me you know that's uh that's cool too i can uh, send you off a mask oh and i forgot to say see i got a ton of these masks made already as you can see they're all done but i'm not going to hair them and 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 send them out to people until they but that's the mask i just had side by side with the uh, the master the yellow master and uh that's ready for sale that's ready to go um it's a small this is a small so if you have a small head that is equivalent it's almost the same size as the michael michael myers a little bit bigger but the, mine's a lot thicker it's a thick mask it'll last you a long time so if you guys are interested in one of these masks uh let me know and uh when this guy's in production i have a funny feeling i'm not going to be able to keep him in stock he's going to be really close to the original and uh it'll be a higher quality it'll be it'll be a thick thick casting mask um the artwork will be banging uh so uh I look forward to doing this mask. I really do. That's kind of why I guess I'm just, I keep punching away at it and get it done. I want to get it done and and and, and then do a, uh, see those, those are, those are uh, <sighs> plaster molds. So what you do is like, you see the hole in the top? Well, that's the neck part. That's, that's the neck part down here that, that molds upside down. So what you do is you pour your latex inside that big hole, let it sit for about two hours, dump the, the remainder latex back out, and then that thin casting of rubber that's on the inside of that, that mold turns out to be your mask. So if you guys are interested in one of these masks, uh, they're going to be $225. That's how much I'm selling them for. $225 buckaroos. And... Uh, I have to come up with a name for it yet, and uh, the winner of that, whoever whoever names this thing, gives it a badass name, wins a mask. Have a great day. Merry Christmas. Stay safe, and uh, eat lots of turkey. Have a good day.